Today I'm putting together and testing the M12864 do-it-yourself transistor tester, but it's actually a more general component tester. I don't know why they call it transistor tester. It can do transistors, resistors, capacitors, inductors, diodes, all kinds of things. It's based on an ATmega328, has an LCD display, a rotary encoder with a push button, a ZIF socket for component testing, an 8 MHz crystal and a couple of 22 pico load capacitors, about five transistors and or voltage references or regulators, and miscellaneous through-hole parts. So it should be easy to put together. The one awkward thing is there's three test input leads, labeled 1, 2, and 3, where the first three are common, then there's the second, and then there's three more common. But that's labeled under the socket. So now the socket's installed. Where's pin 1, 2, and 3 out of all of this? It would have been good if the silkscreen could have had 1, 2, and 3 down here. Or even on the bottom side. So you'll just have to remember once it's assembled where 1, 2, and 3 are. So I'm going to start assembling this. And it's always best to start with the lowest lying component on the board, which would be a resistor in this case. So I'm going to put all the resistors on and then move to the next tallest components until I get it done. All right, the resistors are all inserted, so time to make it more permanent. That's the resistors done, so now I'll put on capacitors and transistors. I also put down the crystal and the header for the LCD. So for the mating side of the LCD, they gave us more than we need. So I will break those off. As for where to connect these headers out of all these open pins, on the board it says 5 and 12. So I'm going to start at the fifth pin in and do it that way. And now I can unplug it to continue working on the board and the header should be good. Now I'll mount the final components and get ready for the initial tryout. Now the unit's assembled and the next step is to make sure there's 5 volts being regulated on the Atmel chip before we install the chip. So to do that, we power it on and check the power pins on the Atmel device. So I have a fresh 9 volt battery and with power applied, 5 volts should appear on the Atmel chip socket at pin 7 and the pin directly across from it. So I'll hold the probes there and then we push down on the rotary encoder to power up the device. And there's 5 volts. So it's time to put the chip in the socket. I'm going to have to bend one row of pins slightly. Now the chip's in the socket. So we just plug the screen back in. And also, there's two standoffs included to help support the screen down on the bottom end, so I'll put those on now. I know that part of the calibration process involves putting a jumper between pins 1, 2, and 3, so I'm using some extra clipped leads, and they include this capacitor as well as part of the calibration. So to get started, we push the rotary encoder
I'm going to do the self test and get it calibrated. It says short probes, so that means a jumper from pins one to two, as well as two to three. Now it's going through a bunch of measurements and calibrations. Isolate probe, I assume, means take out the jumpers. Now it wants this test capacitor between pins 1 and 3. And I guess that's the setup. I'm going to try an inductor as my first test. I have this one with model number RC8 and that's 250 microhenries. So I'll put it on the test pins, power it on, and it said 0.24 millihenries, which is 240 microhenries, which is close to the 250 microhenries it's supposed to be. Now I have a 1N4148 diode. I'm going to put it in arbitrarily with cathode pin 1, anode pin 3 see what happens. And it shows cathode pin 1, anode pin 3, forward voltage close to 0.7 volts. Now I have a power resistor. It's 5 point something ohms it looks like. I'll measure it on the fluke meter first. 5.9 to 6 so, see what this unit says. Five point five five ohms. Now I have a point zero one microfarad capacitor. And it gives 10 nanofarads, which is 0 0.01 micro. 4.7 microelectrolytic with very tarnished leads, but I scraped off some of it. It doesn't matter what the polarity is. And 4.7 micro when you do the math on 47.42 nano. Now I'm going to try a P-channel MOSFET and see if it can figure this out. There it is, P-MOS. Gate drain source pins 1, 2, 3. And all the various parameters it's measured of the product. So, for the price, it was a fun project to put together and it looks like it's going to be useful. I have a lot of old parts in the basement that the part number information is probably worn off. Or I just probably would prefer not to bother looking up all those data sheets. So, just for a quick glance, I can at least sort the parts out using this meter.